everybody come to Cartagena for the for the girls, right? So one of the best things about living in the barrio is the chicas. <laughs> like for real, it's the chicas. I'm talking about this barrio, we got some beautiful women. And it's a spot right here, it's like a rooftop. So we go there, you know what I'm saying, and had drinks. Uh you can meet you a regular chica. Some still living with their mother, you know. These is these, these is good chicas, you know. <laughs> And you gotta actually live in a barrio to even get that access, to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? You nasty, you, you nasty! nasty. Your boy King LG, thanks for tuning in to this video. If this your first time here, please subscribe to the channel. If not, welcome back. Glad to have you here again. So today I have a good topic. One of my subscribers reached out to me, he asked me a question. He was like, yo LG, I know this when brothers travel to Colombia, they don't get the best looking women. Why you talk he like said, that? No disrespect to your girl. You know she's a pretty attractive girl, and I just wanted to ask this question because this is solely based off observation. I'm just asking an honest question, and I understood that because I always hear a lot of guys say when brothers travel to countries like Colombia or no matter where they travel when they leave the United States. They don't get the baddies. They don't talk to the dimes, the teens. Y'all nasty. <laughs> Y'all nasty. First and foremost, I want to start here. Where's your fathers? Are subjective. You know, what you find attractive, the next guy may not find attractive. So let's start there. And I want to add on to say that if you dealt with baddies in the United States and you dealt with baddies out the country, there's really no difference. You liar. You never dealt with no... Mentality. Mm. And the mentality is, it's all about them. So everything is based off how they think things should be, their feelings, their opinions. They think the, the relationship or dating, whatever y'all situation is, they think it should be centered around them. And what I've noticed from my own research, because I've dated baddies in Colombia, during my short time here, I've only been around the block maybe for the last four years. The prostitutes, bro. <laughs> and I spent at least six months out of the year in Colombia. So I've done a lot of research, and what I've seen that is man. that these baddies, oh, this is they it. really attract the women. They make everything all about them. She a smoker. And they want you to give them all of your support. She a smoker. She a crackhead. They pour back into you. And so that's why I say they try to make it all about oh, this is madness. I share an experience so you guys can get a better understanding. So I was dating this Venezuelan girl. She was in her 30s and she had a pretty good profession because her brother is a plastic surgeon. So she was his assistant. And so she scheduled all his appointments and dealt, dealt with everything in that nature. So she had an honest living. She made decent money. She had her own apartment. And she had it going on. Real beautiful, real attractive. And we talked a lot. And Nasty. Just what things went left. So we only saw each other a couple of times because when I met her, I wasn't physically in Colombia. I was in the United States. So I met her a couple of weeks before I traveled to Medellin. <laughs> and so when I went to Medellin, we ended up linking up. And we had a good time. Not the cocaine. So she hit me up and she was like, hey, I'm a little short on the rent. Can you help me out? She said, I can make a loan. I have a brand new iPhone. And in Colombia, they have this place where if they have a new up to date phone that's considered expensive, they could give that phone for collateral and they could give them a loan. And so she was like, I'm a little short on rent. I need a little help. Can you help me? She was like, I could use my phone for collateral to get a loan. She was like, but I don't want to go that route because I need my phone for work. And so I understand. And so I told her, I was like, look, I understand what you're going through, but we just started talking. You know, we only hung out a couple of times. So that's something I'm not willing to do at this moment. And she was like, well, look, what you have to understand is you're the guy I'm dating right now. You're the only guy I'm talking to. So if you expect this to work, you have to be there for me. She was like, I'm a woman. And she's like, I have needs. 
She was like, I need to get my hair done. I need to get my nails done. I Who's his barber? And so if you want a woman like this, then you have to support me when I need it. She was like, that's what I expect from my man. So if we're going to be together, these are things I expect you to do for me. I understood that. But my thing is that early in the game, I'm not willing to make those type of investments just that soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, first, let's see where this goes before we start bringing that type of money into the equation. <laughs> because the thing is, with these women, once you start, you can't stop. That's the thing about it. So how you start is how you got to finish. So if you come off in the beginning, leading with your wallet, as we call it, then she's going to expect that every time. And that's going to give her a lot. I'm sorry, man. Fuck this goofy shit. It's your boy, Tigua. This is wild. It's wild. Y'all busters. Y'all are the biggest busters ever. Y'all out here with, oh my God. This is a movement. This is a real movement. Passport Bros is a movement. Y'all can't get broads here. So y'all run around the world <laughs> hiring prostitutes. Oh my God, I'm sorry I had to say something. I'm going to let this shit rock now. A confidence to start asking for money just because. That's how they are. Like with this girl I dated in Cartagena, our thing was she liked to go to the gym. So when we first started talking, she wanted me to pay for the gym membership. You got pictures she of prostitutes on the internet, y'all. And she pretty much said something similar that, you know, don't you want your woman to look good for you? You know what I'm saying? Trying to put that guilt on you. <laughs> and so, if you want man. these type of women in Colombia, these are the things you're going to have to do for them up front. Not later down the line, when you first meet them, it's almost like they expect for you to treat them like a girlfriend. Even though you're talking, it's called a trick. To get into date, they expect you to treat them like a girlfriend and trick. take care of them. Yeah. And so that's what I found out when I was dating the dimes, these highly attractive women. I mean, I don't think it's a big problem, <laughs> but just to let you guys know that I'm sure other guys experience these same things. He's dancing but with the prostitutes like in public. About these dimes, baddies in Colombia. Is that they not heavy on the looks. Like you don't have to look like some type of male supermodel to get these type of women. You know, they have fair they pass fair judgment when they talk to guys because you what know, the most fuck the guys is these dudes talking about? With, they are not like these supermodel looking guys. And so these women, you know, they're pretty down to earth and they're willing to give normal, <laughs> decent average looking guy has a chance but the thing about it is I saw I had the Bronx to date these women that could be a bad thing could not be a bad thing you know when we have a woman of course we all want to take care of our woman and we all want to express our love that we have to this woman of course what man don't but the thing about it is as soon as you start talking to them that's what they expect. So if you want to get these type of women, they're open to talking to you. You could get them. All you have to do is know the language to begin with. You have to know the language. The this better you speak, crazy. the better your chances are. He got to have herpes. He you got to have herpes. <laughs> as a high value male, you have to. You have to dress nice. Oh. Smell good. You got to be up on your hygiene. And so, because these women, they're up on all that. Their image is everything to them. So, they're up on their hygiene. They dress nice. They're always smelling good. They're always on point. So, you have to match that energy. You have to be on the same wavelength. And so, they'll give you a chance. Solely based off that. And so, I just want to say that these women are not hard to get. And you probably don't see a lot of guys with these type of women because they're big headed. And so when guys understand that, they started selling for the 
I'm not gonna say settling, but they started <laughs> going for you said girls it. around the uh, seven, eight, you know, around now because these women are more down to earth, they more realistic with their expectations, and these women pour into you. Like my girl, I don't consider her to be a dime. You know, I consider her, you know, I see her somewhere a step down. She's attractive. <laughs> she's down to earth, but she pours into me. And so with these baddies, they don't really pour into you like that. I remember one time I was kicking in with this girl in Cartagena and I brought her up to the apartment. And so this apartment building, you had to take two elevators to get up to the apartments. The first one took you up. And it's like you walk to this area out the door. They had the pool area. And then you walk into another building and you take the elevator from there. So when she saw the pool area, she was like, oh, I want to come by the pool and take some pictures. I was like, okay, well, get you a photographer and do your thing. And she was like, you my photographer. I was like, well, that's going to cost you if you put me to work. <laughs> and so she laughed and she was like, she was like, really? But I'm your girl. You can't do that for your girl. And so I was like, look, if that's what you want, then hire you a photographer. But at this time, I'm, I'm not a photographer. So I'm not willing to stand out here and take all these pictures for you. Because y'all know how women are. They have you taking a million pictures. And so I'm just planting that bug in out here up front. Like, nah, look, you're not about to put me to work. He's a straight so I'm some this. If it's a job, then hey, compensate. You feel me? And so that's pretty much how you got to be with them. You got to let them know up front what you willing to do and what you're not willing to do. Straight up. And if they don't understand that, then let them walk. Because when I told the girl that I wasn't going to give her the money for the loan or whatever, she didn't like it. So she was like, if it's going to be like this, then then we don't need to be talking because I don't see you as a man that's willing and able to take care of his woman. And so I told her, I was like, well, if that's how you see fit, then do what you got to do. But it's not my job to convince you what type of man I am. I said, if you're not willing for me to show you that over the course of time, then we don't need to waste time. So we can break this up. And I know to some guys that may suck because you probably have a scarcity mindset and feel like it may be a while before you get that type of woman. No, Again, nobody feel like that. It's just you bust You don't need to see it that way because like I said, in Colombia, these women are real down to earth. Not to say you're going to get a shot at any dime or bad in Colombia. This is dirty business. That because that's, that's not a reality, you know what I'm saying? Some of them just not going to give you a chance because you're not from them, straight up. That's the reality of it. So what I'm saying is, if you don't take a shot, you will never know. The only shot you miss is the one you don't shoot, to sum it all up. And so that's my take on that. I just wanted to put that out there because when subscribers hit me up and they want insight on situations like this, I'm willing to share my experience and give my insight. And I like sharing my experience with you guys so y'all can have a better understanding of what's going on on the dating scene with these type of women if you have not already experienced it for yourself at least you can have a pretty good idea so i enjoy giving it to you guys because i think y'all deserve that but if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and i'll see y'all in the next one Like You're a smoker. Let me the fuck at him. Let me at him. Fee, fa, fo, fum. I smell a fucking crumb bum and a goddamn crackhead. What the fuck is y'all doing out here? Where we go wrong? You bust the motherfuckers? What's happening? Yo, you a cornball. You kind of look like fabulous. <laughs> she a cold crackhead. My G, hold on. 
all them bitches that you just showed, we got them all over here. You just put all those hookers' business out on the fucking internet. You put all of those hookers' business out on the internet. You're shameless. And the wild part is, you have a whole interviews with prostitutes. Y'all matching clothes. You in the fucking bio? Yeah, Rundell family. That's the hood. That's the ghetto. Huh? He in the body of, yo, go down to the fucking point. You can do that nasty work, that nasty business you doing here in the States. You got a lot of subscribers. It's a whole team of you motherfuckers. Hey, yo, y'all should be ashamed of yourselves, man. This is dirty work. Rundown family, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what y'all think. You know, usually I say start rating them. But fuck it. I, we, I'm not reading none of that. That is a, yeah, that's smoker. That, yeah, I know. Uh-huh. What the fuck, man? We out, man.